Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Layers of Fear 2 blind playthrough. And uh, without further ado, let's start up a new game and get into it. Normal mode. Monsters can kill you. This game was originally designed this way. Safe mode. Monsters are still there but won't chase or kill you. Hmm. That's quite interesting. Uh, I'm gonna try out normal mode. See, uh, might change it down the way, but if this is uh, the way the game was designed, this is, I think, the best way to experience it. And something I did uh, before we get dropped into the middle of things it seems was I went into settings and I turned off head bobbing if you have watched my playthrough of uh, the first game you know that is something I turned off like three minutes into the game because it was getting really annoying now I have as I said I have head bobbing turned off but this place is moving around and since there is massive water leakages from the ceiling I'm guessing I'm on board a boat and as with the first game and uh, with all my blind playthroughs that I've done over the years I am going into this rather blindly <laughs> I uh, know very little of this game I watched the trailer for it press R okay so the controls seem at least at first glance to be the same as in the first game uh, but yes I am going into this very blindly I uh, think it revolves around movies instead of art Yes. Such a shame. You almost had it. <laughs> Charming. The unmooring act one. Okay. <laughs> I recognize that voice. Trophy sound bite. Testing one, two, three. Testing Testing one, two, three. Okay. Well, that's nice. It's always great when you earn trophies. What's it say? Build a character, connect the memories, dreams and fears, prepare for the big role. Act. It feels like there are... A Let's see. Hope you settled in alright. Remember what we talked about. Focus on what you do best. Go to that special place of yours. Find your motivation. Build the character. Trust me, it'll be worth it. I'll try to keep in touch. Travel safe. Your friend and agent. Well, thank you. This seems to at least start on a slightly more positive note than the first game did. I'm guessing that will not be the case for very long. 
that a ship? Burning corridor, it seems. Because the first game was quite interesting. It started out dark and then it got worse. <laughs> So long I have struggled to finish what was started. I had nearly lost hope, and yet here we are. Okay. So, let's see. But I really enjoyed the first game. I thought it was an amazing piece of... Uh, quite refined horror. I would say. Hmm. Nice touch. And this... This with the two faucet thing. <laughs> seems to be a British thing. Because I've been to England on vacation and such. And for some reason... In English bathrooms... They have two faucets, one for hot water, one for cold water. I have no idea why they felt that they needed two of them. But <laughs> to each his own, I guess. And something I want to say quite straight off the bat. That... Can I... F like, fill in... Ah. Uh, it feels like it should say interact or something, but it's not quite the correct amount of letters. But uh, yes, something I want to say straight off the bat is that this game feels, the controls feel a bit more fluent. Not as heavy as in the first game. So that is a nice touch. But that is usually the thing with sequels now, isn't it? That they work out the kinks of... Oh, sorry. Apparently you can zoom in. Something is missing there have been paintings, I guess. Uh, now, what was I saying? Yes, that they usually work out any kinks from the first game. Esteemed traveler, the room has been set up as per your request. The reel was delivered shortly before departure. We wish you a fulfilling journey. Respectfully, Icarus Transatlantic. Thank you, Icarus. I feel a bit uneasy traveling with a company called Icarus. I would be more uneasy if uh, it was an airliner. <laughs> because anyone who has read anything about Greek mythology knows what happened to Icarus when he tried go tried his wings. Literally, actually. Did not end well. <laughs> In his time plays the parts of many men. He observes the others. While the others watch him. He's expected to behave properly. Wandering through worlds that aren't really there. He puts on masks. And adjusts accordingly. Each mask is a character. Each character a layer. Layers upon layers calling out to him. He must build the character he was meant to portray. Or lose himself. Submerged, tightly surrounded by lives he's never lived. A 
And yet, he stands on a stage where every man must play a part. And his is a sad one. Act One, the unmooring. Okay. That feels very, very ominous. Build a character, preparation, explore. Who am I? Where am I? Well, I am the Wolfman. And this is our, I'm guessing, silent protagonist. And I am currently in my living room recording this. And our protagonist is on this boat and things have not yet gone to shit. <laughs> so... This has changed, hasn't it? That was something I really liked. Esteemed traveler, as per the director's request, this section of the ship has been closed off to all passengers and crew. We wish you a pleasant and fulfilling day, Icarus Transatlantic. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I'm wondering if this game will have uh, the ever-changing corridors as the first game did. Because I feel with the first game, I can't really stop singing its praise. Because, uh, as I talked about in that, in those videos, uh, just for anyone who may have not watched them, I thought, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was afraid that game would just revolve around jump scares. And I was very pleasantly surprised that that was definitely not the case. It had this super eerie feel throughout the entire game. Constant sense of threat. And scary as hell. And I'm a bit skeptical about the fact that in this game, they uh, that you had to choose in between normal and safe mode. I, uh, cause I, it might be that it was my first playthrough. Maybe it's not at all as scary when you replay it. Games usually aren't. But, uh... Listen, once you get there, just do what you have to do. Get to the set and build this character for him. That's all that matters. Kama Sutra. <laughs> so it seems our actor is more or less a method actor. You know, the type of uh, person that really submerges themselves in the character, like uh, Rob De Niro or uh, uh, what's he called? The, I think it's Welsh. Running a total blank. Christian Bale. <laughs> That's his name. Anyone who has seen his movie, The Machinist, knows exactly what I'm talking about. For that role, he dropped God knows how many kilos. He really starved himself. I think I read that he, like, 
ate one can of tuna and an apple per day for months preparing for that role because he plays a character that suffers from insomnia and he hasn't slept for a year I think haven't we been here before yeah yeah I know you've told me a million times how much you hate the sea and I'm telling you this gig is just too good to pass up French a la carte restaurant, two promenade dicks, free elevators, Parisian cafe, most luxurious first class suite, guarantee of a swift and comfortable journey. Yes, going back to Christian Bale, he uh, he plays a character, as I said, that suffers from insomnia, hasn't slept in a year, and uh, I'm not gonna get into why he hasn't done it, but he thought his it suited his character to be extremely skinny because that he figured would be one of the effects of not getting any sleep and i know he said <laughs> in an interview that uh, after uh, and so it begins Am I? Yes, I'm moving. That after they had uh, had wrapped up shooting of the machinist, he had like a few weeks to get ready for his audition for uh, Batman Begins. All third class passengers this way, please. Did you check the lower decks this time? I swear to God, if we find any stowaways again, you'll never set foot on a ship again. Cool. Yes, uh, just a few weeks later, he was going to audition for Batman Begins, or if he had gotten the part and they were going to start shooting. Can't really remember the details. But he could just plow through anything and everything he came across <laughs> food wise and after having starved yourself for a really long period of time imagine and I know a youtuber I used to watch who did these stupid challenges like eating Carolina Reaper pepper and stuff like that Apparently, he had a thing where he would fast for a few weeks, from time to time. Top of the page torn off. In an unprecedented move, the director decided to shoot this next motion picture aboard an ocean liner traveling across the Atlantic. Plot details are kept under wraps, but our trusted sources claim that the project has found its star in unintelligible name. That's an odd name. An obvious choice, perhaps, given the star's fabled career and numerous critically acclaimed roles. It seems that the recent worrying rumors as to the artist's personal life have not dissuaded the director. So am I the intelligible name? <laughs> Maybe. I'm guessing we'll find out. But going back to the YouTuber who used to fast, just before I wrap this episode up. He said that when he would eat after having fasted for a few weeks, his taste buds would be super sensitive. So he always started with, in Swedish they're called cherry tomatoes, very small tomatoes, quite, uh, quite, how should you say, firm in their texture and usually loaded with flavor like a burst of flavors in your mouth when you bite into them even if you haven't fasted i love cherry tomatoes <laughs> and that would be his first thing he always ate after ending a fast because it would just explode in his mouth 
But now we have reached the 20 minute mark, so I'm gonna end this episode right here. And uh, I wanna thank you very much for watching. I wanna welcome you to this blind playthrough. And I hope you will enjoy it. And I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.